And then when the last 10 nights come, make sure you stay awake a little bit extra. Make sure you do on those nights what you do not do for the rest of the year. Make sure the five odd nights in particular, you put in a little bit more effort. Whatever you're able to do. Also, dear brothers and sisters, some practical advice. One of the biggest issues we see is that people burn out in the first week or 10 days of Ramadan. They do more than they're able to do. And then they're not able to continue so that the last 10 they lose out. Realize there is a sprint at the end of the race. And all of us need to be sprinting at the end. Realize this. Put it in your mind that my most energetic time has to be the last 10 nights. Put it in your mind. That's when I'm going to do my best. So if you feel that you can only do so much, then calculate it out so that that much that you do will be in the last 10. Do not bite more than you can chew as the saying goes. You don't want to go down in the last 10. You want to rise up in the last 10. So my humble advice to all of you, there are five areas we should concentrate on. Number one, salah. Look at your salah right now, today and yesterday. And from tomorrow, increase. Simple as that. Increase all of these five. Number one, salah. Whatever is your constant level of salah, you need to increase the bar. Even if it's just by a little, but it has to be increased. If you're already praying, mashallah, the fard and the sunnah, then pray the taraweeh and the qiyam. If you are of the people who are praying to hajjud, look at your quality as well. And it's not just about quantity, it's about quality. If you're not praying five times a day, well then wallahi, if you were to master the practice and the ritual of praying your five fard in this month of Ramadan, well, Allah, you have accomplished much more than anything else. Concentrate on this one goal of perfecting your five daily salawat in this month. Number two is Quran. This is the month of the Quran. Perhaps some of us do not touch the whole Quran except during this month. So be it. Aim to try to finish one full Quran. But dear brothers and sisters, in all honesty, if you cannot finish an entire Quran, then finish whatever you can. Don't just give up. Don't compete with the Hufal. They can do an entire Jews in 15 minutes. I understand most of us cannot do that. Don't look to the Hufal and say, I can't do that. Okay, do what you can. Even if you recite 10 minutes a day, it's better than nothing. Even if you recite five Jews in the month, it's better than nothing. I'm just asking you to raise the bar. Whatever you did yesterday, tomorrow has to be more. Number three, dhikr and dua. Increase your dhikr and dua. And that's the easiest ritual. You don't need to have wudu. You don't need to face the qibla. You can just be waiting in your car at a traffic light. You can be in between meetings. You can be in between phone calls. Just whatever dhikr you can do. Subhanallah. Walhamdulillah. Wa la ilaha illallah. Wallahu akbar. Before you break the fast, do some special dua. Realize that is the most blessed time of dua. And Allah accepts the dua of the one who is fasting when he's breaking his fast. Number four, charity. Anas ibn Malik said, the Prophet ﷺ was the most generous of all people. And in the month of Ramadan, his generosity exceeded all bounds. Plan out your charity. Try to give some sadaqah, if not daily, at least weekly. And especially in the last 10 days, if you have $1,000 you want to give, spread it out over the month so that you're giving a little bit every few days. Give some to your masjid. Give some to fuqara and masakin. Give some to orphans. Give some to other causes. So increase your charity in this month. And last point for this khutbah, of course, much can be said. Look at your akhlaq your manners and concentrate. How can I improve my manners? Our Prophet Sallallahu explicitly linked Ramadan with improving our manners. He said, uh, when somebody comes and gets angry at you, then respond, Allahumma inni sa'im. Control your anger, control your akhlaq. So Ramadan, look at the weaknesses. Where am I weak in my manners? What is my weak point in terms of my temper, in terms of my tongue, in terms of other things? And try to work. You're not going to become perfect, dear brothers and sisters. Allah didn't create us to be perfect. We're not angels. The goal is not perfection, but the goal is you try. The goal is you put in the effort. And whatever effort you put in in this month, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will see that effort. This is the month of Ramadan. This is the month of Rahmah. This is the month of Maghfirah. The only person who will not be forgiven is the one who didn't want to be forgiven. And that's why our Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was climbing on the mimbar. The day before Ramadan, he was climbing on the mimbar and he said, Ameen, Ameen, Ameen. Three times he said. Then he said, do you want to know why I said Ameen? He explained, Jibreel came to me and said to me something and then said, said say Ameen, Ya Rasulullah. One of the three things Jibreel said, O oh Muhammad Wasallam, any one of your ummah who is alive when Ramadan comes and does not manage to have all of his sins be forgiven, that person, may he perish. Say Ameen. And the Prophet said, Ameen. 
think about it. Why would dua be given against the one who does not be forgiven in Ramadan? Why? Because anybody who desires maghfirah shall be forgiven. Anybody who wants to be forgiven shall be forgiven. So the only one who is not going to be forgiven is the one who didn't put the slightest amount of effort. The one who did nothing in this month. And insha'Allah ta'ala, nobody amongst us will do nothing in this month. 